We have less than one week till the awakening of the Spring of Iskaland event is live on the servers in Dragonair Silent Gods. I am currently on a test server, guys, where I have access to all of the new Chief Challenge bosses. We have six in total uh, Chief Challenges, Chaos Shadow or World Bosses or however you guys like to call them. In today's video, I'm going to help you to prepare ahead of time to know exactly what teams you need to build. Now, these bosses will unlock gradually every single week. This event will be on for exactly four weeks to be more specific. And in the very first week, you're going to have three bosses. On the second week, uh, another boss will be added, making up to four, then five, then six. And that's it, basically, you know. And um, you can only attack each one of them once. Now, once the other world event uh, opens, and if we have the same bosses, of course, you're going to be able to hit as many... Uh, ice bosses or fire bosses as you want to you know as long as you have enough uh, enough teams this video is sponsored by dragon and silent god so i just want to say a big thank you to them for sponsoring today's video if you guys are new to the channel and you want to try out Dragon Air Silent Gods, or maybe you want to help and support the channel, you can download the game by using my link in the description down below or in the pinned comment or by scanning the QR code you see on the screen. Season 3, the Echoes of the Deep is live in-game, guys. We have tons of new things happening. We have a brand new elemental affinity. Uh, we have tons of new heroes, new bosses, how you probably may notice in just a minute. And of course, we have new gear sets. We have new artifacts. Lots of things happening, so jump in here if you guys uh, like what you see on the screen. In today's video, we're basically going to start with the Radiant boss, or aka the Cold Damage boss. Enemies take 100% more Cold Damage. So we're going to attack this boss. Now, the skills on this one in particular are actually very similar with uh, one of the Ice Blast heroes that we uh, uh, had in Season 2, and that is Sheena, the Legendary. And uh, basically, uh, with the A1, generates an orb after a brief channeling, dealing radiant damage to the target. For each stack of uh, radiance crystal, the monster has uh, generates an extra orb. Then, you will have the battle skill, which is pretty much the same. And the ultimate uh, casts the spell for 6 seconds, during which a random enemy is attacked every 0 0.5 seconds, uh, with each attack dealing radiant damage. So, this, guys, is something that... You cannot dodge, you cannot basically trick the boss to attack one specific target. It will be random, which kind of makes our life easier, actually. Of course, it has the passives. This is uh, allowing her to gain Radiance Crystals, then immune to control effects and stacking damage. Now, you know what? We're going to actually use Ice Blast versus this one. And I'll be very honest, Ice Blast is still extremely, extremely powerful against this. Now, I'm going to show you a pretty budget team, I would say. Uh, if you don't have a legendary artifact, keep in mind this is for season 3. If you don't have a legendary artifact, not a problem. Trust me when I'm telling you that this team actually deals so much damage that you just don't need it necessarily if you're looking to get 22 million damage. So I do have the Witch's Remains on Bladin, and I have the Ravatrix, which is the free legendary artifact that you can collect in season 2 by defeating the Fey Mander. The rest of them, how you may notice, are epic artifacts. Now, I do have one healer in this team, which is Frerbart. I do have two mythical uh, pieces of gear equipped as well. And by the time you are getting to defeat, to fight these bosses, you will definitely need to have legendary gear. So together with this event, we actually have the double legendary gear drops enabled. So before you jump on to do these runs, make sure you leave it four or five days and you're doing it the day before reset. So you get to farm a lot of gear right? Because that's how you're going to boost your account. That's, that's what everybody does. So you should pretty much do the same. Now I have Nord, which is a rare champion. I have Gertin. Absolutely love Gertin. Frerbart, who is the only healer in here and a decrease attack. Bladin as an extra damage dealer as, and as an enabler for our uh, Gertin, of course. And I have Elvis. Elvis in here is in here mainly for recharge speed penalty. If we put recharge speed penalty on the boss, that enables our team to basically survive longer because the boss won't be able to stack as much. Uh, the skills on the boss will uh, recharge slower. Overall, is a win-win for us. Let me just quickly show you the builds on all of the, the characters if you're interested again to see it. Then we're going to check the stats at the end. But that's what we have on. Now, I do have a timing. How you probably notice, I have the Crown of the Unclean. I have the Witch's Remains. 
So I want to make sure these uh, heroes will basically not overlap, okay? So I have Bladin using the Witch's Remains because he has a triple hit on this skill, which increases my chance to, uh, of course, uh, put the defense down on the on the enemy. Then I have an exact 11, uh, no, 10.5 seconds gap in between them two, and they are both on a 20 seconds cooldown like this. When Elvis is going to take his turn, he's going to have a chance to attempt to put defense down. Defense down, the smaller version, will not override the bigger version. So it's very, very important to have this uh, on point. Let me just quickly show you basically what we have in here. I have one aura, which is the max HP aura from Bladin, and this is the positioning of the characters. Now, if I would bring in, instead of North, for example, if I would bring in Sadik and have range ones, uh, everybody's going to heal better, you know? So we're not going to have to stress about it too much, but... Let's crack on with the run. It's a five minutes run, a pretty straightforward one. And there you go, four melee heroes. And people are complaining that melee heroes are not great against these bosses. Melee heroes suck. Well, there you go, four melee heroes doing an amazing, amazing job. Of course, not every single melee hero in the game is viable. Not every single one of them will bring you value, but most of them will. So uh, definitely, definitely have them in mind, you know? Gertin doing so much damage. Now, Ice Blast was super strong in Season 2 uh, and is very strong now. I will show you the uh, Psychic Core after the run, guys. I'm literally replicating the Psychic Core I have on my own account to this. So keep in mind, I have one more week till this content unlocks on my server, which means that my Psychic Core will be even more powerful than it is right now. So there we go, Bladin putting the defense down, decrease attack, we have the recharge speed penalty. So basically, this boss moves on approximately 20, more than 21 seconds. As long as we're constantly keeping the recharge speed penalty on, this boss will end up in moving at around 25 second cycle, which will easily ensure that we have defense down on, uh, on the boss pretty much all the time, as long as uh, we are uh, uh, landing the, the debuff. And that will boost our damage even more, guys. Now, what's crazy enough to see is that even though my Psychic Core is weak sauce, completely weak sauce at the moment, I am able to survive pretty much all the way to the end of the run, only with one healer, guys. Of course, having that mythical uh, uh, gear on Furbar, that one piece that has a 50% chance to increase the healing by 50% chance, is actually amazing. And then I do have... Uh, uh, the new set, which I forgot the name for the moment, that gives me uh, increased defense if I'm around the hero. So all of my damage dealers will get 15% defense from Furbart's defense, which is going to be very, very helpful for them. And then, of course, we have an ancestral protection on Elvis to help uh, the rest of the team. And he can soak in some damage. He is gaining increased defense on himself. And, of course, he is uh, getting the, uh, the shield too. Now, what I'm curious is actually... Is that buff of increased defense going to count for the gear set that I have on Furbart? Maybe I'm supposed to put it on him instead? The only problem is I was not able to position him in the middle. I need Furbart in the middle to uh, spread the healing to everybody. So even if it might work, it might not be a good uh, thing in here, but it could be a very good thing on Garius, you know? As long as it, uh, it gets affected by, uh, by buffs. So there we go. We have 24 million damage. All you gotta deal in here is really 22 million damage to collect the points. Now, if you are competitive and you're looking to basically be very, uh, very high on the leaderboard, then yes, you need to basically bring in all the big guns that you have to your uh, disposal. So I'm probably going to use a lot of legendaries in here uh, on my account. But here I can literally show you what I have, uh, what I have available, guys, and uh, what, you can, uh, what you can do with a team like this that is not heavily uh, built around legendaries, you know? So we already have 31 million damage. This actually will give you a very good placement on the leaderboard, but I'm going to check that with you guys in a second too. I'll show you kind of like what you, you need to do approximately in order to get, uh, to get a good placement. You see the boss is barely dealing damage on us too. And that's mainly because of that recharge speed penalty. If you pay attention to uh, how slow the boss is actually charging the damage stacks, is, is great. So Elvis is an amazing, amazing uh, champion to be used in here. If you have a different healer and you need a tank, Elvis can get that job done too, you know? So keep him in, uh, in mind. 
you see, the boss barely deals any damage. And once Frelbar puts that uh, decreased attack on as well, is even less damage coming from the boss. Now I do have the incense burner on uh, Frelbar just to have him rotate that ultimate skill as often as possible. If I wanted to kind of like uh, uh, do it a bit more, uh, more filthy, uh, filthy Kraken style, I was gonna put probably on him the uh, the Rift Hourglass, you know, like that. I would have uh, put in the the attack down on the boss way more often than I am right now. So there we go, 47 seconds in, literally only 10 stacks of damage on the boss at the moment, and he will get two more until the end of the run. But that just shows how impactful. Uh, having the recharge speed penalty is and having it from a champion like uh, Elvis, hero like Elvis that can constantly put it on is massive because it's not on cooldown, it's a passive that one. So it's a big, big difference. You see, he's constantly applying it whenever he's, uh, he's getting hit as well. So we are at 46 million damage. Can we, can we breach the 50 million? We have nine more seconds. We should be able to probably use one more ultimate and spray a few more battle skills in the meantime. Four seconds. Oh, 49. 49.50 40, seconds. I don't think we're getting it. Oh, that was so, so close to get to 50 million, guys. But there you go. It's Ice Press. It's a very free-to-play friendly team. How I mentioned, if you don't have the Witch's Remains, it's fine. You have the Crown of the Unclean and you're still going to hit 40 million damage, which is actually competitive. It's not even just a good damage, it's competitive damage, guys, okay? So check that out. Gertin with 32 million damage. Frerbard with 0.7% of the damage. Get out of here, you're fired. The main thing is that the entire team survived only by getting healed by Frerbard, which is a massive, massive thing. Bladin with 16.4, 8.1 million. Uh, Elvis with 3.3. And then, of course, we have Nord with 13.3 at 6. Uh, 6 million damage. So it's a very, very good uh, chunk of damage in, uh, in here, guys. I'm actually not going to save this one because I'm not trying to complete the event on the, on the test server. But what I do want to show you again is that this is all that you need. You're probably well familiar if you are playing in Season 3. If you're playing in a different season, I already have tons of different videos for Season 1, for Season 2, on all of these bosses. Very free-to-play friendly team. Uh, teams, whale teams, I have all sorts of things. So feel free to check out the Season 2 playlist or the Dragon Air Silent Gods playlist, guys, on my uh, channel. So if you hit 22 million, you're going to collect 5 ores. If you hit 11 million, you're going to collect 4 ores. But let's be honest, if you ended up in being in Season 3, you will be able to hit 22 millions on pretty much all of the bosses. Uh, it's just your account developed so much for the last 3 seasons that is pretty straightforward to, to get the job done. Then, of course, you have the dungeon events that give you 90 of them. You have the summons that can give you uh, 60. The continental challenges, the one of them which we've just done right now, gives you 90 in total. Now, the better you rank, the more damage you deal in all of these events, the more points you're going to get on this leaderboard. And this leaderboard, of course, it will reward you with some very good uh, prizes uh, as well. You know, So definitely try to get as much damage as possible. Don't just stop it at 20. 2 million. But let me just quickly show you the builds that I have on the characters, guys. So we used Curtin. These are the total stats. 54k HP, 1.1k defense, 4.7k attack. She doesn't need to have full crit rate, 90 crit rate, 194 crit damage. Pretty, pretty good with the Ravatrix roots. Then we have uh, Bladin with Witch's Remains. And we have, of course, uh, an Emperor set on him. On Gertin, we actually have... Uh, one of the new sets, the Aerial Battle Roar, which gives you more attack for every crit damage you have. Then on Bladin, we have the Emperor. Uh, this one is pretty much the same like in Season 2. Uh, the lower the attack on the target, the more damage you, you get to deal. Total stats on him, 44k HP, 1.4k defense, 3.8k attack, 80 crit rate, 99 crit damage, 232 accuracy. The accuracy will be very, very important. Then, of course, we have Elvis. Crown of the Unclean, we have an Ancestral Protection set, total stats 64k HP, 3.7k defense, no damage, 260 accuracy. And we have Frerbart on this new set, which is called the Puppeteer's Inspiration. Uh, basically, this gives me defense, 
at three piece sets, 15% of his defense to the entire uh, team that is around him, to all the allies. 65k HP, 4.1k defense, 240 accuracy. And I do have one uh, piece of the Moon uh, Lies Blessing, you know, which has a chance to increase my uh, healing. Then we have North as the last uh, piece of the puzzle with the Manticore, again with the uh, Aerial Battle Roar set. And I have 50k HP, 1.2k defense, 4.2k attack, 93 crit rate. 92 crit damage so it's as simple as that ice blast absolutely top notch in season two in season three definitely do not sleep on them now how i mentioned i will show you the psychic core because some of you might think that my god probably his psychic core must be maxed that's how he managed to do it actually not at all how i man uh, uh, mentioned before i will replicate my psychic core as it is on the current server okay so is gonna be able to represent my actual progression and the progression for the majority of you guys by the time we get to all of these parts in the game that's how ahead you should be i have people that are ahead of me probably with uh, almost a full level of this because i've been slacking this season <laughs> quite a bit you know thanks again to dragonair for sponsoring today's video and if you guys want to get involved and download dragonair silent gods you can do so by clicking the link in the description down below or in the pinned comment or by scanning the qr code you see on the screen that was all for the video. Much love and I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.